Okay. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to the exhibition round of NUDC 2021. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Zudi from UGM and I will be chairing this round. And today's motion is this house would actively instill a value of disobeying, disobeying authority in children. Um, before the round starts, I'm just going to make some disclaimer. Number one, remember that we're going to use WDC and, and UDC POI policy. So mandatory one, one POI being accepted for each speaker. Number two, before you start your speech, please don't forget to mention your POI preference. Is it through chat box or through verbal unmuting? And last but not least, if you have any preferred gender pronoun that you want um, the other people to refer you to, then please feel free to also mention that before you start your speech. So without further ado, I'm giving the time and floor to the Prime Minister. The time is yours. Um, hello, am I audible? Yes, you are completely audible. Okay. Um, I don't have any specific gender pronoun. And if you want to deliver your POI, please do, uh, do choose the chat box, please. I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Panels, our world is built upon the authority that is filled with hatred that advocates for sexism, racism, on all the non-just um, non policies and non-just values just because they have been instilled by a majority, for example, by just because they have been instilled with the interests of the uh, those in power, for example, and has been inherited to and passed down for generations of our centuries and then centuries. And I think as opening government, we want this to stop. We want our children to be to finally break off the chain. And um and that is only done by um this having this culture of this buying the authority. Um, how are we going to do this under opening government? I think that firstly we have to understand that as parents, we are going to uh we're going to train them to become very rational, very logical. It means that we're on, always going to train them to always assess all the values and all the um all the rules that have have been given to them by uh, logic and by um, searching for data or searching for another perspective. For example, this means that we're going to uh, expose them to a lot of perspective of safari, um, from conservative to liberal, for example. We're also going to train them to how to look at into that uh, data. We're also going to train, uh, we're also going to tell um, Tell them that the way you express this, this agreement is um, always going to be in a very um, civil, civil, main, uh, civil manner. This means like you are always going to provide your argumentation in a very logical and structural manner. For example, we always we also tell them that violence is also a, a last resort for them to do if any of the uh, of the previous um, effort fails. Right? This means that opposition cannot come in and tells you that all the mechanism coming from opening government will only result to chaos and children will become very angry and violent and what not i think that if we train uh, if we train and we if we give them the enough understanding on how you have to be logical or rational and you have to prioritize the um you have to prioritize the safety and um the uh, the common good for example i think that this is something that can be done anyway under opening government right so um uh, what i'm going to profit in my speech is two things first that i'm going to tell you about the short term solution uh, short, short term impacts on how that this will create children who will give off the better world for their surroundings second i'm also going to tell you about the long term impact the changes and policies, the changes and values, and how this is something that's exclusive under opening government. So firstly, I think that we have to understand the status quo is that um, for long I've always been told from um, from ever since I was children that I had I should uh, I should refrain from uh, hanging out with people with color for example because the um, because the instilled trauma that they have under 1998 um, tragedy in Indonesia so that's why I cannot uh, I cannot really make friends with people in my um, people with um, people that non other race uh, than me for example I've never be uh, whenever I want to ask question it's always going to be that um, just listen to me and then follow my uh, a guidance because I know what's best for you, right? But instead, I think that this is something that's not fair for the children, and, and that's not something that's true. That uh, you want um your world continue on uh, with the su uh, such segregation as this, right? This means that and under status quo, children has always been told to swallow everything that they've been told to without necessarily um and therefore it's something that um created this sub uh, sub uh, subconsciously uh, racism. Uh, they justify racism because they can never explain why that um, in America, for example, that I cannot be friends and I have to be scared whenever I meet black people, for example, because all the um, all the authority has told me is that just to swallow everything that I want. Um, 
every uh, just to swallow everything that I I'm be, I've been told to just because I uh, just because that's something what my parents would do, right? Okay, before that I'm going to take CEO if there's any POI. Checking against an authority and disobeying it is the two different things. If you still teach them to prioritize the common good, doesn't that mean you knife your own case because you're still prioritizing what the authoritarian wants? No, no, no. That's different because the common good means that you're going to prioritize like also the um the LGBT, the, the minority, all of the oppressed, uh, all of the oppressed group in common society that you cannot really get under your side because all of the your um guidance and all of your authority will tell you that you can you all you need to hate on the black people and you need to really uh you need to really be scared of LGBT because they might uh, they might be contagious and whatnot. So that's not common good that you are going to talk about in this uh, in you you're going to defend under your case, right? Because that's something that's uh um definitely against the authority so i think the common good under my side is um, definitely most better because we're also going to take care of the minority we're all not we're stop we're going to stop the subconscious bias against uh, subconscious hatred towards racism because finally we're questioning why my parents told me to hate on the black people and why my parents told me to be scared of the lgbt for example i think that that's something that's not going to be possible under your side but let me continue so knowing this i think that in the short term i think that this is something that going that's going to stop like all the school bullying for example and all the um all the unexpected, uh, explicable hatred towards the minority that you happens at school, for example, you're going to reform the how they interact in, in school, and finally they are going to blend in, for example, and finally they are going to have a better pattern of interaction with minority and any other oppressed groups that finally that's not going to happen under your side. Because mostly under opening government, what you're going to get is that um, you, uh, you're going to get is that um, they're going to question and they're going to uh, disobey all the uh, all the uh, all these unjust um, unjust rules coming from the authority, for example. And secondly, I think that there's something that's very important that you know um, why is that their judgment is going to be something that's acceptable because mostly opposition would come and tell you that um, maybe that um, maybe the children will make a uh, wrong decision because they cannot think for themselves, for example. But firstly, I don't think any decision and or any guidance is going to be perfect. It's something that's really a heavy burden that uh, you're going to throw at us if you uh, if you argue it that way. But secondly, I think that the human nature of these children, especially when they are a blank canvas and they have this empathy um, as a human nature, for example, I think that that's something that uh, it's only humane that they they, are, they can be friends and they can make good decisions and they can make uh, decisions that do not hurt their, uh, uh, their, their, their surroundings just because they are not told to uh, anyway, right? This is uh, an example on how the children can really be friends with um, people with different colors with, before they have been told that all the stigmas and all the uh, scary narrative of um, befriending with minority, for example, right? So I think that under short term, this is something that's completely beneficial and it's something that's finally going to create or um, finally to break the chain on this kind of unjust learning and unjust rules that have been um, made by authority and that's going to change under our side. So secondly, how this is going to change in the long term, right? Because finally, you're going to habituate these children that will finally affect them in the long term on how they're going to be the leaders and how they're going to be change makers. For example, you habituate them to have the critical mind. And therefore, I think that um, all the policies, the moment they take control is something that's going to be definitely on um, the culture of discourse instead of the all subconscious and inexplicable hatred and all the passed down, um, um, passed down discrimination, for example, is something that's going to stop under our side, right? Right? because mostly that you're going to have like the culture on finally um uh, on finally uh, questioning and finally taking care of all the argo uh, logical and argumentation coming from pers um, different perspective and therefore i think that in the long term this is something that's very important very proud to propose thank you prime minister for the fine speech now i welcome leader of opposition the time is yours Okay, um, hello, am I audible and visible? Yes, you are audible and visible. By the way, for everyone, uh, it's preferable for all of you to turn on your camera, but you, if you have any internet connection issue or you, you prefer to not make yourself visible, that is also okay uh, when you give your speech. Uh, by the way, you are audible. Okay. Um, POIs through chat. Starting my speech in three, two, one. All of government's arguments are largely inexclusive and taken away by four mechanisms. First, 
Questioning and looking for data is something that is inexclusive on both sides of the house. On opposition, we can still encourage children to be logical, to look for data. If somebody instills racist beliefs, what the difference is on government and opposition is on their side, they will explicitly disagree with that belief. On our side, we will not to them, but not actually apply that to your personal life because you know that being racist is actually something that is bad. So you do not take it into your personal life and you don't apply it into your decisions. We think that authorities are not present 24 seven. They cannot control your life. All you have to do is appear nice to them so that they are nice to you back, but not actually follow their orders. Secondly, our alternative is to cooperate with authorities. If you disagree with something, you find an alternative so you can disagree healthily. So for example, you make compromises with your boss if they disagree on a like very strict rule on your working hours, for example, you find a middle ground on that point. Thirdly, what we will do is we pick authorities that you like and you do not like. So you do not become too close to the ones that you hate and you actually connect more deeply with the ones that you like, but you still need that authority because authorities are the people that give you power. So. On our side, looking up to opposition parties in government who are not racist is something that is okay, but you still should not cause excessive riots and keep on disobeying the status quo government. Fourthly, social movements and, and like movements in important cases like authoritarian regimes and like racism are largely out of the debate because anyone who doesn't get instilled these values will still rebel regardless because it is something that is dire to their entire life and their personal self-determination. Social movements with communal st struggles will unite regardless because of communality. You don't need the value of disobeying to do this. This debate is about the individual choice and the one-on-one -on -one interactions mostly with children and their peers and the, their authorities in their closest lives. It is about personal choice and where children have to choose themselves we prefer cooperating. Two arguments. First, why disobeying authority is harmful for the child's life. Second, why obeying governments is also better as well. So first argument, why disobeying authorities is harmful for the child's life. Note that authorities are people who always have power over children. They have control. It is things like teachers who control your grades and punishment and determines whether you can advance to the next class, for example, whether you can go to a good college, for example. These are the people who write your recommendations. Adults and parents are people who will determine what kind of school you're allowed to go to, what kind of friends you're allowed to hang out with as well. So they have large control of your life decisions. Why will government always fail and especially fail on the actor that they want to protect the most, which is minorities? We think that these minority students and workers, if they try to protest with their teachers and their bosses, all they will do is shut down, is like get shut down because opening government has provided no likelihood of why the authority is going to comply. If exactly the, as they say, authorities are so persistent, then that means they have a high sense of self-esteem that they do not want to concede and they do not want to like automatically agree to what the child says. That means the only way that you should like approach these people is what we propose on opposition, which is that you make compromises or you be nice in front of them, but you do not take their advice into real life. So that means on our side, Firstly, the authorities feel like they get respect, so they are still willing to give the good grace and give the opportunities to the minorities at work, for example. But secondly, children can still get what they want because their personal choice and their personal life is not that much influenced by that authority themselves. Why is this important? Firstly, because authorities can give you knowledge. Authorities can give you advice. They can give you to opportunities and life, like life choices that you might not that you might not expect before. This is simply because they have more experience. On the government side, you are likely to miss out on advice on what jobs are actually best to pursue in the status quo, for example. That, that's why you get bet, like better life opportunities on our side. But second of all, you get better promotions, you get connections, and you get liked by people, right? And that's why you can rise up on the ranks, and that's why you can get all the benefits that the, that the government want on our side. Because even if you are oppressed in the, in the short term, if in the long term you rise up in the ranks by being nice to the authority, you get more freedom at the end of the day, even you can become an authority yourself and become a representative for your minority communities. So this already flips their argument. But thirdly, I think it is emotional security as well. And specifically talk talking about children, children are people who are vulnerable to criticisms to of their parents and their teachers. If they disagree too much and the parents and teachers say that they are somebody who is dumb, for example, or somebody who is who does not have a place in society that destroys that child's esteem and this is the source of mental health sufferings from the children because these children are very very like vulnerable in terms of emotions that's why on their side their self-esteem is likely going to be degraded and much worse on opposition it is protected because you become nice to these people i'll take a point from oji you're literally advocating for compromise, so I don't think that's going to be a significant change to all unfairness and all the racism and all the instilled hatred of past. Right, the compromise people. looks like this: maybe a racist boss asks a woman to like work for like nine hours a day. You want actually seven, but you take eight. That's a compromise. That's actually fair enough on our side. Second argument: why obeying governments is better than their side. So I think this is like still in the debate because 
obeying governments on a personal choice is still something that is in the debate. So why does government side, if I want to engage with their case fully, not work on like criticizing all the racism and structural hate that they actually explain? Firstly, I think that if you keep on disobeying with the government without any compromises, you are likely going to like not provide any solution to the government and none of your alternatives that you convey as a person or as a collective is going to work and convey like convince the government for something that is better. You are likely going to grow into a violent movement that is actually what is happening in many kinds of movements in the status quo because all they do is disobey everything and not think of alternatives. This is what happens when you actively instill that value, right? Because you do not learn how to make compromises and you do not learn that skill of actually stooping down to to some place and actually settling with something that is realistic. But secondly, if you actively instill this, that means you also disobey all kinds of authorities, not just the authorities that are bad. That means you do not have the ability to follow orders, even in your own social movement, because you keep on questioning them and you keep on not believing in them. You do not have the ability to trust these people and they all, and you always criticize these people. What is the harm in this? We think that if you keep on criticizing everything, either no progress happens or at the best case of the government side, if some progress happens, it is much slower than when you are somebody who can actually make compromises and make step-by-step progress. These are the kinds of things that we support on opposition. Social movements that actively like advocate for step-by-step -step progress. Like for feminism, you advocate for the like for like some inclusion in the workforce first. And then that's when you like include the better pay system, for example, at least you ask for transparency first. And next you ask for like fair pay. You do not directly ask for fair, fair pay at the very start. You do it in a step-by-step -step and compromising way. So that is why the, the alternative on our side is going to be much better. And it is actually the ones that fulfill the metrics of government and so of social change. So why do we win this debate? The reason that we win this debate is because firstly, we flip the government case that minorities are actually going to get much more freedom because they can become the authorities on our first argument. But our second argument, we also prove the positive case and the step-by-step -step way of how social movements can actually get changed. And this is a much more realistic and achievable way to get changed. You need to cooperate with authorities because you are powerless and we need to recognize that reality, vote for opposition. Uh, thank you, leader of opposition for the fine speech. Before we continue to debate the Prime Minister, just gentle reminder to every single debater to give full 15 seconds to the one that delivered the POIs. Uh, don't interrupt them when they give the POI. Um, uh, that's it. And next, um, I welcome the Deputy Prime Minister. The time is yours. Hello, my audible. Yes, you are. Hello. Yes, you are. Okay, I'm going to set my timer first. Uh, my PI preference, you can uh, use the chat box. I have no gender pronouns. I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Judge, understand that rules that exist currently is created by the majority simply because they have more leverage rather than the minority or simply because they want it. We think within that for too long as a uh, we as a society we already been doctrined to succumb towards this kind of authority that we cannot criticize them and we let the minority is being oppressed for too long due to the facts there's still a lot of people in color who still get the injustice or even being killed by the police in itself we think that it's proof on how the authority uh, currently is still a uh, it's still very, very unfair towards the certain minority. Opening government want to change this. That's why we we will instill them uh, with a value of disobeying the authority towards the children, and it will make them becoming more critics. We will tell them on how uh, sometimes we should not always following the authority. Sometimes we should look at the humanity sides or even another rational sides. We think that it's going to be much more better because uh, because it's going to create a better relations uh, in the next generations. Because under our side of the house, they, uh, as a children itself, when they already uh, when they already get this kind of value of disobeying the authority, within that, uh, they will have no bad idea for another minority. They will have no hatred because they think that authority is not uh, is, is not the place where, where they should be succumb and unable to be critics in the end of the day. And then opposite, uh, 
in the world of opening oppositions, uh, the minority will never win because uh, foreverly the authority will be favored to the majority because they have more voice, they have more power, and they are uh, and the society inside world of opening oppositions are still always obeying the authority in the end of the day. That's why within the in the end of the day, this kind of minority will not getting any justice. Clarifications before jump to my rebuttals. When leader of opposition says that obeying government will be better because in opening government we provide no solutions under our side of the house, we will only uh, give a violate, uh, fi violence and, and so on and so far. Within that, uh, this is uh, within that uh, uh, under our side of the house, we already state that we will give a mechanism that people will be more rational. We will gather all perspectives perspective as much as you can and we will uh, we will be more critics on which which perspective is with the best uh, and give the best for the majority and also the minority under our side of the house we ask our children to give argumentations if they don't agree with certain authority laws and so on and so forth and even if in the end of the day we are going to having a violence that's going to be the best way because for too long the authority uh, the authority already being so the Traitor towards the society when they don't accept any kind of critics and so on and so forth. And we think that it's perfectly fine for you to choose a violence because at this stage, the authority in itself is already unhealthy and we need to create change in the end of the day. That's why we think that this point already fell down. Uh, two rebuttals before jump to my extensions. Firstly, when they try to claim on how uh, under the side of the house, when you know that it is bad, you can do good thing in real life, and you are you not necessarily needs to critics uh, the authority, but you still able to do a good deeds in real life and so on and so forth. Understand that un, uh, in the world of oppositions, they're going to create a society perspective that clean, uh, like giving an unjust treatment towards the minority is fine because that's what going to be happen in the law enforcement in the world of oppositions. Under the side of the house, uh, even if some children are born sane, they see that all people is just the same regardless their race, regardless their color and what's not. But but when they saw the reality that even the authorities in itself are doing something injustice towards this minority simply because they have a different color, for example, we think that what's going to be happen is the justifications of this injustice actions. On how, because know that these children is still a child, right? They're easy to accept all kind of values that exist. That's why. As a parent itself, we prefer to actively instill the value of disobeying authority in the children because we're the one who having control of our children before our children are getting injected coming from the world outside of there. That's why within that Indian of the day, this, this is not going to be happen in the world of opposition. But secondly, battles, when they try to claim on how authority is the one that having control, opening government will have nothing to do and so on and so forth. Firstly, exactly, if you suck them, they will keep controlling you. And secondly, shutting, uh, uh, shutting down the, uh, the, uh, the voice of people that critics are not going to be happen because we are going to gather for, uh, gather voice to oppose them. They will listen because in the end of the day, the authority don't want to get more condemnations. Uh, moreover than that, within that another group of voters must be accommodated because that's the only way for us to get in into the justice uh, justice environment uh, to get the justice in the end of the day. The comparison in the world of oppositions is that nothing changed because they will keep succumb towards the authority in the end of the day. And there will be no development or what's not and no justice for the minority. That's why within that, even if uh, we are uh, have uh, we are not as uh, powerful as the authority, but when we gather the voice of oppositions together, within that we are still able to create this justice and create the changes for this uh, for this authority. Moving on to my extensions, talking about why it is going to be bad in the future by following opposition's bench. Under the side of the house, there will be lesser uh, people that doing critics because under the side of the house, uh, uh, they think. Uh, they give a mindset towards the children that authority have no space to be questions. They give a mindset that authority is something that you need to succumb in the end of the day. It will make these children that actually going to be the future leader of our country, for example, are going to just let it be and think that 
it's okay. Uh, and think that what they do is useless, what they do is lead into nothing, and so on and so forth. We say that it is exactly bad because there will be lesser people that go into critics to the government, and exactly there will be lesser development for this authority in the end of the day, right? Comparison in the world of open government, these future leaders are, are already having a certain mindset that good for the humanity in itself, that critic, uh, that they're critical and so on and so forth. Creating a change is not easy indeed, but within that this small change by by uh, instill a value of disobe disobeying the authority in children is one of the way. That's why for the sake of minority vote for open government. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister, for the fine speech. Gentle reminder that um, NUDC is using minimum one POI policy per speech, and the failure to accept one POI minimum per speech could result in reduction of speaker score or flipping result between close calls. So please keep that in mind. Now, I welcome Deputy Leader of Opposition. The time is yours. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. I'm sorry for not turning on my camera, so I have a very bad connections. Uh, let me arrange my paper. Oh yeah, POI preference, please just unmute yourself. I might ask in the five minutes if I um, wanted to ask POI for a CG. Okay, starting my speech in three, two, one. In the world of the opening government, I think they never explained to us, but why then, if you are having a lot of critics, therefore is going to having a good job in the future, you can change the government, etc. Because the value of you are instilling this disobeying something, that is why the parents were going to against the authority. The parents will tell you that the authority is really bad. The parents will shape to you that how bad is your government, how racist is your government, regardless of the conditions of your government of your governmental system. Meanwhile, we're going to argue to you in my next extensions that the participations inside the policy making or participations inside the implementing the policy is something that are really important, especially in the democratic countries and so for the minority itself. So there are three things in my speech. Number one, I will engage to the minority problem and widen this problem is still exists, it, it, why then this problem is still solvable under opening up stations. Second, I'm going to talking about how then the policy maker will not going to solve anything under OG when they don't care, when they don't trust the government. And the third, about how then the worst case scenario, even if we're having less critics, but those things are fine. So let's move on to the minority problem. Why then do we think the minority problem is still um, is still progressing in under status quo. We have three reasons on that. One, because people in the status quo, we already have sympathy. For example, when we saw the black people got killed by the white police, for example, or when they when we saw the uh, when we saw the victim of the genocide, etc., we already have the sympathy on that. That is why people still donate to Uyghur or to the Rohingya, for example. But second, because we have the relatability, because you also becoming the part of those oppressed society, for example. That is why those kind of issues, social movement already exist in status quo because we are not disobeying the we, because it is not because we're going to disobeying value to the authority but it's because we really understand that finding the humanity is really uh, a good it's really a good choice to do that is why in status quo we already have a lot of critics towards them but on their side if you're going to indoctrinate someone indoctrinate your kids to become more um to become more balanced or to become more um anti the government itself but what happened is that you're your people are your people will become norm to actually criticize the government. Meanwhile, we don't think that it's going to be a good thing because if you're going to going to and distrust your government. That is why this is where the democracy falls. Because we're going to argue to you that under our side of the house, we still having the ability for children to actually be responsible towards their actions. For example, we're not going to say yes to their oppression or the racism, but we're still going to be responsible to teach the basic morality of the children itself. For example, we, are, we also argue to you that information is still access. For example, in the media and newspaper, we already told you that what is the right and wrong. Therefore, we don't need to instill those 
kind of value. We also already have the universal principle or the religion, for example, in humanity, as a Torah to tell to you that racism, discrimination is something that are that really, really bad, and we do not want that. But then the second issue then, why then the policy we're not going to work under the whole government bench? Because the trust toward the government is really important, for example, for you to follow the, the policy and also implement it. For example, in the terms of lockdown policy or vaccination policy, or simply just to creating the tolerant tolerance policy towards the minority, for example, you need participations inside those kind of democracy itself, because without those kind of issues, people, people are going to just going to betray everything and they're not going to follow the law. That is why the chaos are more likely to be happen under the government benches. But second, they also argue to us about how then nothing changes in the oppositions. No, we tell you that the politicians under their side are going to always want more more water, for example. That is why the well, that is why, for example, under us at the house, we already have opposition party to, to cater our minority, for example. But on the this side, they only want to cater if there is a clear solutions, for example. That is why the the class matters are cannot going to say the police the police, but we're going to reform the system, for example. But under us at the house, we're going to click create, create the tolerance and why that is exclusive. Because under this side, you already indoctrinated to distrust those kind of government is going to add more implementations that government is bad therefore you don't believe towards their policy therefore this going to this for therefore uh, comparatively under our, under our side we're going to check ourselves as a community implicitly for example if i am racist people for example because this community community are going to become the tipping point here under opening oppositions because we tell to you that if you're going to instill this disobeying value, you're going to distrust everyone. That is why you're going to be become, become selfish and also individualist. This is not good because we never learn about the skills of comp compromises. They don't care about another people and they won't compromise the issues, especially the governmental, especially the incumbent government because they're always receiving the, a lot of critics. And when they don't change that, those critics are going to be uh, very not important. So I open the POI for the closing if you have any. Do you agree that Trump is allowed to be impeached or canceled due to strong disobedience towards him? We argue to you that in oppositions, we still have rationality, like what we already clarified before. That is why if the government, if we saw that the government is really, really bad, therefore we also are going to criticize that. But under but the difference is that under your side, whatever, how good is the government, you will never trust those kind of government. That is why the progression inside the policy making itself, the policy implementations are not going to be works anyway. You need to clarify that in the closing government extensions. The next issue then, why then with, why then with lesser critics under the house at the worst case scenario that is still preferable? Because we argue to you that, our, the, that someone who will become the leader of the social movement under oppositions is someone who are really, really care about those kind of issues. But under the governments of the house, those kind of people are most likely are only the people who are indoctrinated by the parents to uh, to actually um, to actually to actually uh, engage towards this kind of uh, incumbent government, for example. But the problem is that you don't have you uh, you don't have any ability for you to also criticize your your people on the ground, for example, not only just the authority, but also the people on the ground. But the difference is that under the house, we have lesser critics, but those kind of people who are giving critics is the meaningful critic, critic with some like advice and so how then you're going to change the status quo, et cetera, because we Not a wide issue because there is some a gray area issue that we need to cater out. That is why the conclusion is that the critics under the house is still enough to actually create advocacy in the future. So the conclusion is that we already argued to you that how then the people are still going to be irrational under under the house, and it is not something that are exclusive under the government, and their minority issue is something that are still. A still solvable and arrested house. And second, the most important here, the participations inside of the policy making. And so the policy implementation is something that are really, really important. We're proud to oppose. Thank you, Deputy Leader of Opposition, for the fine speech and for closing the opening debate. Now I welcome Member of Government to open the closing debate. Time is yours. Um, check. Um, am I and the bell audible? Oh. Yes, the bell and your voice are audible. 
Okay, I think uh, my speaker just broke, but it's fine. Okay. Um, PRI through just unmuting yourself. Starting my speech in three, two, one. This debate is not about whether or not we prefer anarchic states. Given that opening debate is too far-fetched because it sounds like they're talking about in the, in the next 20 years and children will disobey everyone and it's at the school everyone should compromise to each other in, in order to prevent chaos, in order to create stability. I think we're just, we need to be moderate in discussion regarding how the disobey, disobedience manifest in children, uh, starting from their childhood, for example, towards manifestation towards parents, towards teachers, then we talk about politics and whatnot. For example, I would like to engage to opening government, um, sorry, opening opposition. They told you two things. Number one, the alternative, which is cooperating with authority is better, compromises is better because we're, because we're powerless. And second, disobedience, disobedience is harmful because the weak are going to be shut down. First response on the alternative. Number one, that's not true. When you're powerless, the moment you cooperate or compromise means you have no choice but to submit to them. Why is that true? Number one, power imbalance. Those who you submit to will have more ability to decide what you can and cannot do. This looks like if Sukarno in the past cooperate with Japanese military group, Sukarno has to su submit with whatever Japanese military group says or the Netherlands uh, military, for example. Therefore, even if there's no chaos happening, you aren't able to have the ability to make choices for yourself or for your own community or the weak community. But secondly, the reason why, if you compromise, it's still it's going to be much worse off is because you aren't able to speak out your minds and get attention. This is true because the majority of people that is in, author, in, in, in power or the authority will think that you are inferior and they are better. Therefore, they have no likelihood to listen to whatever you say just because you compromise to them. This looks like in, in the past, how Indonesia, in, in the Indonesian parliament itself, Indonesian couldn't speak up for themselves and they have to speak in Netherlands language because the majority of people that is an authority, authority is Netherlands. Therefore, their analysis regarding compromises and cooperating will result in have a benefit or having some sort of benefits is untrue. But secondly, why it's not harmful to actually um, disobey is because number one, that means the majority uh, the, the people in power will most likely listen to you with your ability to disobey to what they say. This looks like the younger generations in the past, Manchulik Sukarno to Rengas Denklok, for example, because they were disobeying the older generations, resulting in actual negotiation with Sukarno in order to create a proclamation, for example. This, is, this can only happen when you are able, as a weaker individual or weaker group, to disobey and show to the, the authoritarian figures or figures in authority that you are indeed in also, in, also in power because you're able to disobey whatever they say, and therefore, negotiation can happen because the power or the gap of imbalance can be filled with that disobedience. Secondly, on a cyclical cycle of authority, this happens where minority groups or opposition groups get in power, like being a president. Then there will be critiques and disobedience that will happen, and then they'll become, and then the um, the other group will become in power. This looks like um, Republicans and Democrats, where they have cycle of authority. The past, they will, uh, the Trump leads Republican, now it's Democrats, we'll, we'll see in the future. This becomes a cycle. And it's, this instability is healthy for two reasons. Number one, that means there's not going to be the same individuals in authority because they will disobey each other, like the Democrats being disobedient with the Republicans. So the Republicans will have a hard time making policies and whatnot. Therefore, they have to be more moderate to Democrats and whatnot. But secondly, 
there will be different representations with different positions and interests in cycles because they, there will be a lot of disobedience happening in, in each other because the democracy is in the authority, whatever. But lastly, there's an effort to listen in a polarized interest. That, that means there are going to be much more centuries or representative to different spectrum of interests because then you have you will have to listen to other people in order not to be criticized for being in authority. Therefore, Oo's argument regarding his obeying is harmful because the weak are going to be shut down is not true. Because being shut down, um, shutting down people in power is good because it means that we're legit, legit, uh, decreasing their legitimacy and invalidate them and invalidate the oppression that's happening. This increases the likelihood of gathering the mass individuals against authority. For example, when the cops attack protesters during the protests, it makes the mass angrier towards oppression and aggression from cops and makes the movement much greater and have higher attention. So if we are shut down when we become disobedient towards the authority, it's good because that means our movement is actually making great change. And Delta is, even if we're hurt, even if we're attacked, that means the attention towards the oppression is bigger. And that means the magnitude of uh, uh, urgency is bigger because that means we need better change, quicker change and whatnot. Let's engage to opening government. They explain to you the urgency and the benefits of this motion, but they're missing manifestation. Why is selling in children is really important and what is the manifestation? Three things. Uh, before that, PR. Yeah, it rang us Deng Kwok happened absent this policy. If it was strategic, social movements would do it anyway. So why do you have to generalize and disobey every single authority? Again, cyclical cycle of authority, because that means you have exchange of authorities, that's good and whatnot. Three manifestation. Number one, children will will worse is not yes yet exposed to reality. There is a lot of idealism. Therefore, it's easier to instill regarding disobedience compared to adulthood when you're exposed to cruelty of the world. You're less likely to opt into disobedience because you're scared, your job and whatnot. Farsi students backing up from voicing out because they're safe in, uh, they're okay with safe zone and comfortable with low keenness and whatnot. But secondly, the nor normalization results in two things. Uh, it manifests in two things. Number one, diplomacy needs practice and takes years to learn. It's easier to instill um, diplomatic disobedience in children than the adult because the, in adult you are more likely to be really angry to the oppression happening inside the school. Secondly, there's a slightness and strategies that are better implemented if you teach from your from your a, a child because that means you're able to practice a lot of years before you're actually implementing in politics, for example. Lastly, in emotional security, it's better because we prepare them from emotional attacks because that means you're also going to experience a lot of attacks from your younger. That's better because that means you are more prepared than um, being shocked, knowing that the value uh, does not really um, persistent hard to propose. Thank you, member of the government to, for delivering fine speech. Now I welcome member of the opposition. The time is yours. Okay. Um, yeah. No gender problems. Uh, for POI, just through unmute. Um, I'm going to start in three, two, one. This debate talking about if we should instill a value into children, we, we think as the closing opposition, we need to focus on the analysis on the children because all opening benches have over it tell to you is on the analysis on minorities, the analysis on government. The problem is these are manifestations over the analysis of children and CO is the only one that's going to give you a step-by-step -step analysis on how this is bad for children, on how the inherent lack of moral compass that children has. If you instill this value, this will disrupt other values that the children should have to be a function adult in the society right now so this is what's going to come from closing opposition so this is what's the problem in opening debate is they're not focusing on the right actor they're focusing more on minorities they're focusing more on the government they're focusing more on, oh which will make a better government system the problem is we're talking about children here and analysis on children is very important and none of the opening benches has given you that but first of all uh rebuttals to the opening government opening government wants to give you a characterization of the government as it's like a they gave a they gave a very generalized uh, characterization of the government, of government being inherently racist and government only having unjust laws. 
The problem is with their definition of unjust laws. Unjust laws exist on a subjectivity. That means some people might see some laws as unjust and or not, and they don't answer in their mechanization on how they're going to cater on this big group of people who see different unjust laws. Because like, let's say an anti-masker will see the law to wear a mask outside in this COVID right now as an unjust law because they have different values with other people. So this mechanization is very, fairly un unanswering for a lot for a big group of people. But first of all, on their characterization of government being inherently racist, government being inherently sexist, this analysis comes into two folds. First of all, government won't be racist because of the because them them wanting to get swing voters, them wanting to get voters from every race, them wanting to get voters from uh, people who support the idea of anti-racism, people who support the idea of anti-sexism. That is why it is inherent in the government. They will try to portray themselves as unracist. But the problem is a second analysis on why all of the laws are unjust and the system and the mechanization that opening government gives to you is not strategical it's like not all of their laws are unjust there are there are certain laws that are set in place to keep let's say peace or to keep a moderate uh, situation in society right now the problem is with their mechanization both uh, opening government and closing government if you want to put a certain stone where you should disobey everything why should you disobey every law when the system of fixing unjust laws in the system of democracy of democracy and also in the system of like questioning this government why should why should you disobey everything rather than just pick things out which already exist in the status quo and we believe is already enough in solving the problem? This is the pro problem with opening government. Opening opposition, same problem, wants to focus on minorities, no, ex no analysis on children. And we as a closing opposition, opposition will give you a better analysis on children. And further than that, will give you a better manifestation on how, we'll, how it will look on our set and better comparative than opening opposition gives to you. Okay, so first of all, state, straight into my argument. The analysis also one, the first argument will be about the analysis on children. Second will be about the manifestation on teenagers and more than that. So first of all, the analysis on children. Children does not have an innate moral compass when they are still small, when they are still babies. And if you, they do not know what to view in life. And it is, the, it is the job of people in authority, such as parents, teachers, and everyone else, to actually instill these values into the children. The problem if you instill the, 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 problem if you instill the value of disobe disobeying authorities, this will hinder the entrance of other values why because if you if you teach the children first to disobey authorities to always disobey authorities whatever the authority says it is wrong then if let's say the the teachers let's say if the parents want to instill other values such as honesty such as respect such as other things they will already have an inherent uh, inherent thinking in their mind that they will have to disobey these authorities and disobey these people's words why is POI. it very likely for children uh, for children to do this okay so before i go i'll take the poi okay so why do you think a universal moral standard such as kindness, uh, not stealing, is something that is they're likely going to challenge? Like why? It's going to challenge this because these things are the, what the authorities need to teach you from the first. Because you're not going to get these values if you don't teach them from a very young age. The problem is the problem on why they are going to challenge because children are inherently uh, they are going to misinterpret the idea of uh, disobeying laws. This is because let's because because we can see on the inherent um, characteristic of children where they they are very selfish. They cry when they want to get food. They cry when to get they 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 cry when they when they want to get anything they will mischaracterize a lot of values that you teach and this disobedience will be mischaracterized to a very big extent where they do not accept other values because this is their idea of disobeying laws so then this is the the idea of analysis on children this will also affect the school industry because then the school or the government the state which is the main uh actor that we need to focus they will try to they will also want to teach you a lot of things they want to teach you a lot of values they want to teach you a lot of knowledge but the idea that you need to dis you need to disobey authority will stick with their children where they will question these schools they will question these governments since children and they won't get the values that they need to get that which is very essential for these children to then function in the world so the, the idea of children accessing information because information only comes from people with authority because people with authority already have has more experience than you, more knowledge than you, and basically more moral compass than you. The, the point where you where you say we are going to, without uh, judgment, 
disobey these authorities no matter what, then these moral judgments that come from these authorities, these more um, experienced views that come from these authorities, that just doesn't translate into your brain. So you won't get better decision making from children because then children will not want to do decision making based on the authorities. They will do decision making based on what the authorities doesn't want you to do. And we see this as bad. But then what is what does this manifest? First of all, on the comparative, authorities are already legitimate because they go through a certain process in the democracy where people elect them and they need certain criteria to become authorities. But let's be generous to the, the government side and let's say authorities are not that legitimate that actually every single of their policy is just that shitty. The idea of disobeying them does not solve this. Why? Because once you disobey authorities, once you say, oh, this, is, uh, this policy is shitty, this policy is shitty, whoever is going to replace them will still be disobeyed against because no matter what, the value that you uphold is disobeying authorities. So the idea of a good policy will not exist in your side and this will create a very, um, very violent turmoil grounds for the government, very violent turmoil grounds for the authorities because no one in authority will be viewed to have a good sense of value or a good sense of seeing into things because you have the inherent value to disobey these authorities and this is why in the long term you won't have a good system of authority you won't have a good system of then fixing these issues because you straightly go to disobeying them rather than trying to solve things with that already exist like through democracy through the election and other stuff and this is why you are proud to oppose thank you opposition member for the fine speech now i will come Government whip, the time is yours. Uh, Tess, I just want to check, uh, am I audible and clear while I'm turning on my camera? Yes, you are clearly audible and visible. Starting my speech in three, two, one. If it's true that people hate Trump anyway, that people hate Bashar al-Assad and all forms of dictator, if that's true, that people have that strong of a common sense to, you know, and don't need this kind of value, then we don't need things like BLM protests, then we don't need things like a prolonged social all forms of social movements. Because the fact that we it requires us a very so long effort to impeach Trump is because there are still other people who think that Trump is right. There are still people who think that their common sense means that you know Trump is not racist and, and whatnot. So what does it prove to you? It proves that data, things like common sense and everything that oppositions relies on is not a valid reasoning why we shouldn't like have this kind of values rights. Because there are still people who think that this is the right common sense that they need to employ. So what, what does that mean? That means for you, exactly because things like common sense is something that is very uncertain. So you need a forms that to, uh, to impose towards these children that they need to criticize any forms of leaders. But second of all, even if that we're going to like, you know, criticize all good leaders, in closing governments who have answered why then that is but i'm going to discharge several things coming from uh, closing governments so basically their ideas is talking about why then these children's having moral compass is something that is very extremely important and why to be that right but some response they explain like you know what kind of marks this means like is it because it's like like take like something that's fixed i'm going to see what opposite bench talks about but they do you know children don't know about the standards of uh whether they should follow fairness and and whatnot then this argument that I about the ideas the people will have their common sense to you know depose leaders who have to
Matthew, uh, I think your connection is unstable. Cut off from the Zoom. All right. Matthew, are you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, barusan, I just got cut off. Okay. Uh, uh, you um, need to restart. Very well. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Yeah, uh, we started to lose your speech at one minute ish. So I think you can restart okay. it from the beginning. Maybe, yeah, you can restart. I'm just going to turn off my camera. Sorry, sorry. All right. Really apologize. All right. Uh, I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. If opposition thinks that people will hate Trumps anyway, people will hate all the dictators anyway, like Bashar al-Assad, individuals who are clearly dictator, then we don't need any form of effort, things like a constant BLM protest or a constant all of our like, social justice movement efforts in order to depose or impeach these kind of individuals. Because the fact that it requires us so many effort to uh, impeach and to put down these authoritarian leaders is because there are still people who think that these are the leaders that uh, just leaders that they need to still hold power. There are people who still think that Trump is not racist or like, you know, most of the dictators are not indeed dictators. So what does it tell you? It tells you that things like data, things like common sense that oppositions provide is not a valid justification on why people would just constantly like, you know, uh, going to challenge these kind of dictators, right? Because exactly because there are still peoples and there are still supporters who support these kind of, of individuals. So what does that mean? Exactly because things like common sense is something that is uncertain. Data is also uncertain because you can manipulate data. You have different forms of data. What's something that is certain is that you impose a way and a manner and a value towards these children that whoever the authority is, you need to constantly challenge them. But even if closing government is going to challenge that, oh, you're not going to have like, you know, a good and constant stable government because you're going to constantly challenge these leaders who have answered to you in our speech that why then the cycle of leader is something that is inherently good. I'm going to answer that on my speech. But several response towards the closing governments, right? Basically on the ideas of like things like moral compass. So first of all, they never explicitly define or explain why then suddenly these children would not have things like, you know, a a common standards of morality, things like fairness and so on and so forth. Because yeah, I think I think irrespective of leaders, you're going, you're still going to see that those kind of values is something that is you know a universal value that everyone needs to follow anyway at the end of the day, right? But even if it's true that these children will wouldn't know like things like fairness, something that is so universal, then they're all of their ideas about you know people going to directly imp uh, impeach Trumps or impeach all of these dictators will not work, and therefore you need to have a greater principle. As to why you know these kind of values needs to be imposed because you need a standard in telling them that these leaders are not good at the end of the day, right? But third of all, we think that it's a common thing that individuals change their value and change their morality, right? I mean, like the individuals like in the past, like uh, you don't necessarily have like the same moral standards as what you are right now because things like you are progressing, you learn new things. So it's something that is something that is common and not weird things. But lastly, we think it's even better when these individual and these children have don't have like a rigid moral compass or a universal standard moral compass. Why? Because it means that these children will start to explore all forms of morality and all explore all forms of moral, moral compass, and they will now like try to. Matt, we're losing you. Things that they feel comfortable with, as opposed to what happened in opposition, would most likely have a much better preference. With you. With you. Um, uh, we're losing you. Uh, can you hear me? Am I lagging? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, am I can I pause? Wait. Okay, okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, also, sorry to interrupt. Um, what's your PI preference here? Uh, my PI, okay. Uh, unmute your mic, please. 
Oke, okay, uh, three minutes ya. Uh, what was the last point that you guys heard? Kayak buat moral compass. Moral compass. Um, last thing was okay, about... Uh, is this already is audible? Already audible. Oh ya, ada last thing tadi apa? Karena kayak there are several points. Um, choosing, choosing their own morality. Oke, oke. Oke, I'm gonna continue my speech in three, two, one. So that means these individuals and these children will start to have the ability to choose their own morality because right now they are not going to be constantly, you know, told what kinds of morality that they should follow by their parents. But before moving on, uh, any POI? Yeah, yeah, Grandma Thunberg disobeyed all authorities that talked to her and became too idealistic for anyone to listen. Why will that work well for the social movements on your side? Yeah, sure. Thank you. This leads to my next point. Why then the cycle of leaders, like even if you have a good leaders, why then a prolonged, like in the constant positions of these good leaders, it's not something that is inherently good. Because what we argue in closing government is that Democrat does not mean an absolute truth and Republicans also does not mean an absolute evil. This exactly when they talk to you about, you know, these minorities will not be able to be leaders. Listen, the prerequisites for you to have a minority to become a leader is for you to criticize the current incumbent government, which is mostly the majority. Because this is the reason why Indonesia, for example, never have like a Chinese minority as a president. They never have like a non-Muslim president because people are habituated to accept any forms of these leaders as long as they're Muslims, for example. And they never have the ability to criticize these kind of leader because such value to like normalize these, leader, these leaders is always embedded, right? But even if, the, you know, you're going to... Uh, uh, Opposition say that, oh, you're going to, you know, criticize these good leaders and it's not bad for the uh, long-term systems of government. This is exactly why racial contribution matters because it does not mean that when you have, for example, like a much more liberal, liberal governments, for example, like the Democrats holding the power, it means that you're going to, oppositions can fiat that, oh, this is going to be an absolute truth. Because, for example, this is exactly why you need to have like a diversification of interest. So, for example, when the Democrats mostly cater into things like, you know, uh, environment or like things like social justice issues and less likely to have concerns about economy, that's why people who are most likely like the Westerners or like the low-class individuals like farmers in the United States will never be, their interest would never be caters. And that's why we still need to like, you know, even if like, you know, these Democrats are being criticized and in the future, Republicans are the one that holds the power. It's something that is good because you're going to have like a diversification of interest and like, you know, uh, most of the interests of these various people who are still going to be catered anyway, right? But lastly, let's talk about the ideas of like, you know, compromising with leaders, right? First of all, they never told to you why then, you know, compromising with leaders is something that is likely, like why would these leaders would suddenly listen to you, right? Because the, the inherent characteristic of you criticizing these leaders is there are several things. One, it means that you're going to exploit the character, the inherent character that leads to their injustice, things like their racist, for example, things like they're corrupt. You amplify these ideas and tell it to a large number of communities, right? But second of all, it may also mean that these abilities give you the ability to highlight these characteristics. It what is what delegitimize this authority. And this is the prerequisite for you to have leather forms of like better policies, for example. Why? Because you prevent any attempt from, from this authority, like, you know, provide a counter argument to justify the act, for example, and, and so on and whatnot. What happened in opposition is when you try to compromise this is that you're going to dilute and you're going to overcloud all of the injustice that they have done. So it's going to be less likely they're going to step power because right now they have the justifications that I haven't done wrong, that things like racism, things like corruption is never been proven because you're never provide any more because you never provide enough airtime towards these unfair leaders uh, and so on at not all. But lastly, but you know, this strengths the children's self-esteem is the most right? I think it's worse on their side of the house. Because you're going, you need to characterize the problems. This is exactly why children's self-esteem in the status quo is bad, because they're always told to constantly obey their authority, to always constantly obey their leader. And they never have the ability to express their ideas. Under our set of the house, this is the moment where these children have the ability to express their grievances, things like their unfairness, they're being treated un unequal, and so on and so whatnot. So therefore, it's better in our case. Very proud to uh, people. Thank you, Government Whip, for the fine speech. Now I welcome Opposition Whip to close the debate. Um, yeah, very sorry, but can I go to the restroom really quickly? Yes, you can. Thank you.
Um, for POIs, please unmute yourself. And I'll definitely be taking one. Starting in three, two, one. I thought that closing government came close to actually talking about children. Unfortunately, their extension, which was dropped on children, came on 6.00 minutes. I think it is very clear CO is the only sensible team in this debate, and that's why we get first. Two issues in this speech. Firstly, what happens to children? Secondly, what do we solve racism, sexism, all the bad things about authorities that every other team wants to talk about? Before that, one piece of framing. This house is the state. None of the government sides have explained to you why the state would implement this, especially when this deals with local authorities and local levels of authorities as well. This looks like the schools that teach you values, the authoritarian of parents. This harms education and those forms of socialization, which is something that no other team bothered to engage with, and that is why they lose. Firstly, what happens to children's learning? Absolutely no discussion about this coming from opening debate. OO simply just asserts that you probably need to cozy up the authority to get like recommendation letters, which was dropped in their second speaker, probably an exclusive because you can find recommendation elsewhere. Even if you don't buy that, what we tell you is logically prior to OO, and this is where CG does not engage at all. We pointed out two things in the comparative, which was much more important as to why we win. Firstly, that children make just randomly bad decisions, right? They don't put their assignments, they harm themselves because they play with fire and they see that it is fun. Note that OG tries to preempt this by saying, ah, but any teaching is going to be imperfect. Note this is untrue for the reasons that my member told you. My member explains that this authority is good because they are experienced in their own lives. Teachers know that being honest is a good way because they are mature in that sense. They have faced their own experiences as to why honesty is good. This is why you need to impose this upon children who often make bad decisions regardless. The second thing to point out is that it is much harder for you to instill morally good values or morally positive values in the side of government. Respect and honesty is much harder to teach because you question whether or not this is good. At best, we get a line from opening opposition that says children are selfish, but we actually explain to you why this is the case. These values, like honesty, fairness, have no intrinsic benefit to the individual. So children who often like base their decisions based on sensory experiences or the fact that they have a benefit to themselves and increase their happiness will often do it in their own self-interest. Children have no conception of morality because they're inexperienced and they do not know what the reactions of others actually look like because they've only lived there for like seven years of life, right? What is CG tries to respond to this? CG tries to say two things. The first thing he tried to say is that, ah, but universal values are going to be accepted on both sides. Realize that this is just an assertion. We explained that children are likely to mischaracterize. So for example, the reason why you cannot teach that you should prioritize the common good in opening government is because when you find a situation where you can deprioritize the common good for your own self-interest, for example, you steal someone's pencil or whatever, they will just say, Ah, but the teacher like a long time ago did tell me that I can disobey authority and disobey some rules to that extent. So for those reasons, all of the teachings that you have on site government in the way that they try to co op our benefits are inconsistent with the fact that you still want them to disobey those rules and disobey the exact source of those values to begin with. Children are going to justify doing something for their own self-interest, and that is why it is harmful. The second thing CG tries to say is that, ah, but that means they won't have the common sense to like overthrow people in power in the future, and that means CO is inconsistent. This is a massive straw man, because maybe in adulthood, they will also learn that through experience, which is the reason why, right? Like, they learn that you should fight against racism because they also face it. And that is indifferent to the fact that there's a moral value of fairness. For those reasons, that is symmetric to both sides or is probably uncertain. What is more certain is the harm that happens when they are children, when they have not developed morality or instilled those values, when they go towards adolescence and become juvenile criminals because they think it is cool and preferable for my friends to like, for me to sort of disobey authority because it is something that is valid as well. Deposing Trump is something that is based on self-benefit because the ones who vote them out are those minorities. That means our moral principle is independent of that argument. What is the way of this particular claim coming from our side of the house? There are three things to know under here, and this beats out every other team. Firstly, this is the most direct impact to children because you don't know for sure how they are going to grow up. It was absurd for every other team to simply go for the social movements. When we explain that this harms children's development in a way that they do not like get good values growing up or they do not go towards the system of authority, for example, or they just don't are not responsible 
in that sense. The second point of weighing is that these harm everybody else, including other children who are also harmed by the fact that you are not fair, for example, that you cheat, or for example, that you disobey authorities and therefore it is harder for you to impose rules during class or impose rules during your childhood. Thirdly, social movements are not the most important thing in this debate because of the exact reason that opening opposition gives you, which is why their claim is less persuasive than our claim, which is not inconsistent with our own case. Before I move on to my second LDA, I'll take a POI uh, from CG. CG? Secondly then, do we solve racism, sexism, and all bad authorities that exist? Um, if anybody has a POI, I'll take one later. The first thing I wanna take out is CG's extension, which I don't think is exclusive because they only explain to you that there's a cyclical cycle of authority where it is good for you to sort of like not compromise with Democrats and Republicans to not compromise as well. Firstly, I think criticism is largely inexclusive as was pointed out by opening opposition. So I'm not going to repeat this. The second thing to point out is that I don't think you sort of just end up compromising in the end when you both sides are radical and want to disobey each other. I think you just happen to like rally up your voter base even more. Trump was so angry. The outcome of that was Trump literally asking his followers to disobey the lockdown rules and go for the capital riots, which is a necessary condition in the side of government um, in this debate. The third thing to point out is that if disobedience was such a strategic policy, realize that people would have done it anyway. All their examples, like Renga's Deng clock or whatever, happened absent this policy. If it was strategic, they would do so regardless, and they never actually tell you the principle as to why you should apply this to every single authority. What is our comparative and why it is much better? And here I want to actually flip the claim coming from CG, right? So OG says that people will disobey unjust laws. We explain that that is exactly the problem. People have different forms of morality, which is the claim from CG, and that is initially going to be bad. What happens on side government? There are two things to note under here. Firstly, people will just disobey good laws and authorities because it is very rare for you to have a bad law that is so discriminatory because of the call out mechanisms that exist. What happens is that people can justify disobeying every other law. So for example, it looks like anti-maskers who bypass democracy. The second thing to point out is CG's claim on like choosing your own morality, right? Because CG explains that it's good for children to have their morality. No, because they can be indoctrinated towards bad values. So for example, it looks like teenagers go into far-right communities because you see them as friends or your equal as opposed to an authority. That means you don't believe in the value of race, like anti-racism, you value racism, for example, because you don't, the one spewing out that rhetoric is not an authority that you have to disobey. Why is an imperfect authority much better? There's at least some form of basic protection, even if you don't buy every other debate, this is the most important thing because government doesn't explain why all authorities have to be generalized as racist. One, we prove to you they are not, therefore you should not generalize and it does not make sense for you to generalize even for the random individual to disobey like a normal law, for example. But two, we explain the comparative that people turn to worse values, things like far-right communities. Authorities can be checked, but these communities cannot for those reasons opposed. Thank you everyone for completing the exhibition round of NUDC 2021. And it was a really great and interesting debate. Um, once again, we are really thankful for all of your contribution and volunteering in this round. And um, everyone can leave the meeting and we hope